In this episode, I wanted to look at how to write an incident report, also referred to as a post-mortem. Rather than give you something of my own creation, let's look at a Google incident report from early 2013, which I think serves as a great example. Before we dive in, I should mention that I'm not affiliated with Google in any way. I just liked how they handled this incident, and I think their write-up should be set forth as an example for others to follow. You can find a link to the incident report in the episode notes below. Working in IT, we all know that from time to time, things go off the rails, despite our planning and best intentions. When things do go wrong, you might be asked to write an incident report that can be shared with senior executive, fellow staff, or even customers. I recommend you go through this process whether anyone will read it or not, since an incident report can serve as a guide and you will be analyzing your environment when things go wrong, and ultimately building better ways to prevent these type of failures moving forward. When I read Google's incident report about their API service outage, it struck a chord with me because it seemed to answer all of my questions and it helped give the impression they knew what they were doing. We are not going to read the entire report, but let's look at the report structure and several things mentioned in it. The structure is actually surprisingly simple and yet powerful. The report is made up of five parts, an issue summary, a timeline, root cause analysis, resolution and recovery, and lastly, corrective and preventative measures. Let's review each of these parts in detail. The report begins with an issue summary, which is short and to the point, and it weighs in at just five sentences. It includes the issue duration and the time zone. Since you likely have customers that are all over the world, the time zone can be helpful for your customers when they're trying to correlate a problem with your outage. Next, they talk about the outage impact, which resulted in 500 error response messages for most users. And at its peak, it affected 100% of the traffic to the API infrastructure. And then in the final sentence, they list the root cause. Next, we're provided with a timeline of events that happened during the outage, which also includes the time zone. The first entry is the configuration push that ultimately caused the outage. And the final entry is when 100% of the traffic was back online. If your outage were to span multiple days, you'd also want to include the date stamp as well. The next heading talks about root cause analysis. This paragraph provides a detailed explanation of the root cause. You will also note that they do not sugarcoat the fact that this configuration push skipped testing and went straight to production. And then they give a detailed explanation of the failures encountered while they tried to correct the root cause. Next we move on to the resolution and recovery heading. The first paragraph mentions when Google's internal monitoring systems alerted engineers that there was likely a problem. The second paragraph talks about how engineers noticed that a configuration push likely caused the issue and they tried to roll it back. And the final paragraph talks about how engineers were able to finally restore service. The final section talks about corrective and preventative measures which is essentially an itemized list of how we can prevent this type of failure in the future, and some critical thinking about what we can do better next time to handle these types of issues. This incident report also highlights the fact that Google has lots of internal systems and procedural machinery happening behind the scenes. I think of these as best practices for any company. For example, they have automated service monitoring and alerting capabilities. We know this because they listed when the outage began and when the team was alerted via pager. They also have change management in that they were able to see who did what and when, and ultimately try and roll back the changes. In my mind, this is key. If you do not have visibility into changes being made, then it will take time to figure out what triggered the issue in the first place, never mind trying to roll back. They also did not sugarcoat the fact that the configuration push skipped testing and went straight to production. The goal of an incident report isn't to name and shame engineers who make mistakes. It's ultimately a learning exercise so that we can be better next time. So if you ever find yourself in a situation where you have to write an incident report, I highly suggest checking out Google's incident report listed in the episode notes below. I would also recommend thinking about how Google's internal systems and procedural machinery can be replicated in your environment. All right, that concludes this episode. Thanks for watching. If you would like to get notified about future episodes, please subscribe to my mailing list. You can do this by going to the Get Notified link in the header and entering your email address. 
Have questions, comments, or concerns about this episode? What about episode ideas? I'd love to hear your feedback, either good or bad. Shoot me an email, justin at sysadmincasts.com.